What's up? Welcome in Hogan Johns with you as the pads finally went on at Hallis Hall. And the offense looked like the same damn old offense. There is some thud. I think I saw two real tackles. Well, well that goal line drill was mainly real, right? That looked, I, I described it as live-ish. Live-ish? Yeah, it seemed live. Well, sometimes tackling in the NFL is just live-ish. Especially in the Bears secondary last year. True. Hey, oh. Live ish. Um, yeah. Who is it A for the offense? Not a good one, but a day. But a day. It was a Tuesday. For the <laughs> it Bears was a offense. Tuesday. Yes, yeah. It was Tuesday. <laughs> Thank God it was a Tuesday, not a Sunday. Woo. Oh, those are coming. What, what's up? Welcome in. Adam Hogue, Adam Johns with you. Follow us on Twitter. Johns, he's got the RC Cola from Hallis Hall. Is what from I just saw. That Absolutely. Because there's no one buying RC Cola. Come it on. It is an exceptional pop to drink with Chicago pizza. Whoa, that's very specific. Tavern style. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'll be very specific. Not deep dish, but the, the tavern style Chicago pizza. RC has always been a traditional pairing, often given to you by uh, by the mom and pop shops uh, free. Like you would get, you order two large pizzas, get the two liter of RC for free. I'm not aware of this. This is amazing. Come on, you grew up in Chicago? Yeah, the two liter of pops, but not RC. The only place yeah. I've ever had, R there's two places in the world that I've ever had RC Cola. Okay, one of them Soldier Field. All right, because of the park district owning the property. And then the other is a restaurant I used to work at called Oak Street Beachstro, which was also on park district property. So we, we were required to have the same damn, uh, you know, fountain soda machine that the Bears have in the press box. Oh, man, there are so many Chicago pizzerias just with RC. Really? Yes. How have I missed this? Although yes. I do have to say, yes. I'm not one. That, I'm usually not the guy who gets the two liter of pop with the, the free pop. Yeah, I keep on. I keep wanting to say a liter of cola from Super Troopers, especially because it is RC Cola. But the Chicago one in you tells you to call it pop. Right. Absolutely. What else would you say? That cola. Not cola. <laughs> Never. But cola. that's just a funny scene from Farva and. Super True. Troopers. I'll give you that. What a leader of cola. Damn it. Anyway, uh, we try to keep things light. It's a coping mechanism, I think, for us watching the Bears offense sometimes at practice. But today was a day where we had to do that. Please follow us on Twitter. Uh, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Notifications on, uh, on uh, YouTube if you watch us that way. For those of the OGs that just... Keep listening to us as a podcast. That's awesome, too. And please rate and review the podcast if that's what you do. Please tell some friends. Uh, it's awesome seeing the Bears fans out at training camp. Always love this time of year. Appreciate all the compliments on the podcast. And even the hecklers, too, from time to time. We appreciate you, too. Yeah. Bring it. We're fine. <laughs> I can't say I've ever had a heckler. Have you? At, like, camp? Yeah. No, I've heard other fans heckle other reporters, and I've been and encourage them to continue it. Oh, yeah. Well, I've ha I've also had other reporters heckle us, but not. <laughs> there was, oh, yeah. Was it last year that Kevin Fishbane got heckled for something? Why am I forgetting the specifics of this? But we were on field two. Okay. And we were leaving early, and someone, I think it was a Ladarius Mack joke to Kevin Fishbane oh, from the top yeah. row, and that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Fully encourage you. Listeners to continue doing that because Ladarius Mack is no longer on this team, but it's still funny. His love for Ladarius Mack. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I do remember that happening now. That's I'm awesome. looking forward to this year's version of that podcast where we talk about players who have impressed us and to see which player that Kevin just surprisingly brings up that we weren't prepared for to discuss or even even knew was on the team, especially this year. We look at the roster. Still can't believe these guys are on the team. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Like during the one on ones, one on one line drills today, I'm like head up, head down, head up, head down. Who's that? What number is that? What? Who changing. is that person? Why? What in the world? It's crazy. 
It's starting to play <sighs> tricks on me too. Like I can't RC, even. Oh my god! The beverage of Chicago pizzerias. <laughs> For me, it's just the beverage of Soldier Field and Hallis Hall. True. Although typically I go Dr. Pepper, but they've been out of Dr. Pepper for like a week now. They have been. Yeah. That has been noted. I don't do the diet, Dr. Pepper. I want the real deal. They've also been on a hand sanitizer in the bathroom for about two months. Well, COVID's over. Haven't you heard? Um, yes, I think. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you probably heard by now as you're clicking on this podcast. The uh, It's been a struggle with the offense. Can I start with a positive? Okay. Because I just don't want, I hate, get, we'll get labeled as all the negative stuff. People don't want to hear about, like, we're sorry. We're just telling you what we're seeing in practice. Okay. But so let me start with a positive. The offense kicked ass in the goal line drill today. The live goal line period. Run drill. Run. Running. But no, they were doing passes too. Yeah. It was mixed. And they almost every rep was a touchdown. Like they were scoring. And it was the ones, and it was the twos. Trevor Simeon was looking like a starter. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to reiterate this again. A lot of play designs I really liked. A lot of play designs that take advantage of what your quarterback brings to the table. Remember when Justin Fields scored a rushing touchdown week one? L.A. Remember that? That was a thing. Good times. That was the thing. Maybe tap into things he can do. I'm just saying. Do well. Do fast. He may airmail Nikhil Harry into the end zone when he's wide open from time to time, but he can run the ball. I know that. Um, so that would, and I mean it, like that was a, the running backs for what I thought was a live period were walking into the end zone untouched. So all the concerns about the old line, all the dominance the defense has had, Jalen Johnson correctly saying that the defense has won every single day of training camp practice so far. They look pretty good in tight spaces there near the goal line, which is, was a problem for this Bears offense pretty much the last four years. Jalen Johnson was asked today if the defense won the day. His quote, yeah, we ain't lost today yet, if you ask me. Why not? Shit, I don't know. We're busting them. I don't know. We're just bringing that juice, really. They have been better. Um, I, I so Take that and think about that for a little bit. I will to stay with your positive mindset. I'm becoming a believer, and I think this is good. That This is a, a step called a run in the right direction. I think the Bears will be able to run the ball. I think they're finding offensive line combinations that work well with the outside zone that they want to run. I think they have some violent running backs, guys that could get downhill rather quickly and pick up yardage. And David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, those are just the starting points. I think that will be a positive. I think that's I, I think that's developing right now. I'm becoming more convinced of it every day. Like the first run in practice today, David Montgomery, six yards, maybe more if it was full contact because I think he's running through some of those thud tackles. Yeah. Stop the ball, give him six yards. I'm thinking he's getting eight or nine, maybe 10, maybe even more if he's allowed to finish his run. But the passing, regardless of drill, it's starting to, I don't want to say alarming, but it's a problem. Adam, it's a problem. So is it on the quarterback or the wide receivers? Well, I thought that seven on seven drill which I believe followed the successful goal line drill. It did. Yeah. So they did goal to go red zone drill. They did red zone, uh, red zone, uh, seven on seven following that, um, goal line drill. And it wasn't good. And you're going to have to tell me about this. Cause I, oh, they it wasn't split, good. They split up. So all the linemen were doing one-on-ones and that's where I was on the other side of the field, watching the O line D line one-on-ones, which I, to spin that positively for the offense, not spin it, but just tell you what I saw. I actually thought the offensive lineman did pretty good. Okay. I saw one rep where Larry Borum legitimately got beat by Carson Taylor. Other than that, I thought even the ones where you might say, okay, the defense kind of won that rep, like the off, it wasn't an obvious, like 
beat them off the ball right away type of play. So I thought the offensive line handled themselves well. But while that was going on, I completely missed the seven on seven and just recently saw a video that was going around on Twitter of Nikhil Harry wide open on a corner route yep. and Justin Fields throwing it out of the back of the end zone, overthrowing him, not giving him a chance to catch it. Well, let me let me just read something from our camp report that Kevin and Fishbane and I just, just filed. You can read it whenever you're listening to this podcast up on athletic.com. The offense struggled in the seven-on-seven seven drill prior to the hurry-up. We'll get to that later. Where Fields' incompletions more than doubled the passes that were caught. Everything felt late. Receivers came open, but the passes weren't thrown. Sometimes they were wide open. Receiver Nikhil Harry was left uncovered in the end zone because of a broken coverage, but Fields overthrew him out of the corner of the end zone. Watching that play, like you saw him get wide open. And I think it was Herb Howard, our friend who was next to me, goes, oh, he's late. He's late again. By the time he got to him, it was almost like Fields panicked. Like, oh, my gosh, he's so wide open and just threw it. Ball went too far. There were a couple routes where, like, you try to watch the mannerisms of the running backs and the receivers. And I, re I recall two instances in particular that are in back-to-back -back plays where, well, David Montgomery and Kari Blazingame were open. Like, if that pass is thrown, if he gets to that progression fast enough, it's a touchdown. Montgomery's case, I think it's a walk-in touchdown, but it wasn't made. It's a problem. You froze there for a second and looked like you're falling asleep. Oh, uh, sorry. I was uh, doing a Tony Larusa impression. <laughs> it's good. Oh, look, you're, I apologize. You're quick witted today. You're good. It's impressive. Uh, I'm just trying to ignore the trade deadline. Is all I'm trying to do. No, it's just uh, why is this always the same damn story with this team? Now, let me give you a positive. Okay. Full, full team drill early in practice. Justin Fields gets great protection, steps up in the pocket, delivers a strike to Byron Pringle over the middle. Big gain, a lot more even after. Some yak, some yak attached to that passing catch. That was a positive. You hear coaches talking about like stacking good days, stacking good plays. I think that's where my evaluation is. I'm just telling you what we're seeing. I don't mean to be negative, but I'm just telling you what we're seeing. Well, They're like, not being yeah, stacked. No, and I and I get what you're saying because what you want this to be looking like right now for Justin Fields is what it's looking like for Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker, where every single day we're like, damn, those guys look like they can play. We're not, I don't, we haven't had a single day where we're like, oh, Jaquan Brisker had a bad day today. No, it's consistency. Every single day looks like a starter, looks the part. And you don't just get a pass because the quarterback position is so hard to play. This goes back to the expectations, the high expectations I put on Justin Fields before camp started. It's part of the problem, I think, in this city with us just setting a low bar because the quarterback play always sucks, right? You don't go in to – they're not going into Chargers camp right now being like, oh, yeah, Justin Herbert, he, you know, he, he can have three bad days in a row, you know? Now, he might earn that benefit of the doubt because he's done it before. He's already had success. But, no, the expectation is you start stacking – Good days of practice. Um, now, I, I think I, like I want to comment like this is for me. It's like a lesson learned from the Trubisky experience. Yeah, like year three, right where it's Nagy two point oh, and they're challenging him a bit more. They want it to be more difficult for him. You got some big plays. He made some exceptional throws here or there. He showed you his athleticism, but the good days just weren't stacking enough. You get that sense right now. I'm not again. Let's not go down that that full Trubisky road quite yet. But I and I know there's some. They're not fully similar in their storylines right now because this is year one with Luke Getzey, where as opposed to that was year two with Matt Nagy. But there's some things. 
Seven and seven should look more clean. Yeah. They just should. Mm -hmm. When things favor the offense, they should. Yeah, I totally agree. So, um, <sighs> hopefully it gets better. I don't know what else to say. I have three questions for you. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do this to further the conversa conversation about Bears training camp. No. And I, I, I kind of did the cliche-like questions here. All right. Buying or selling? Are you buying or, or selling the success of the Bears secondary? In particular, Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker. And even though what? Jalen Johnson ejects the whole secondary. Even Kendall Vildor. Forget just the rookies. Are you buying or selling the success of the secondary right now? Okay, I'll 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 love buy everything until you sent Kendall Vildor. He had a nice pass breakup today in Justin Fields. Yeah, he also had a flag to end practice. That's true. Which, you know, don't practice end the, was over. You don't end a game on a defensive penalty, by the way. So I don't know why you're ending practice on a defensive penalty. Run another damn play. They might have been out of time. May, maybe know. Matt Eberflus had seen enough from his office. Yeah, he's uh, nope. <laughs> Like that's that our best. That's the best play goal. we've had in five minutes. So yeah. let's just take that. You know, and I believe that pass sailed out of bounds. It was uncatchable, anyways. What? Well, whatever. <laughs> yep. Nope. The officials were there. They called it a flag. Uh, yeah. To answer your question, yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I and I especially am if Kyler Gordon can prove to be able to play outside in base and slot in nickel. You know what I mean? Move from positions. So then that, are you okay with Kendall Vildor being outside, or would you rather have Kyler Gordon outside and Tavon Young in the middle? Well, I think that's something that they got to work out. I haven't seen enough from Tavon Young yet. Okay. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is if they determine that Kyler Gordon is their best slot corner, he can't come off the field on base downs. I want him on the field the whole time. So he needs to be able to play both is what I'm saying. Yeah. Which is where they've worked him so far. It's true. And he might be special enough to do it. Although I'm going to say the other day, it felt like Vildor was getting a lot of work outside. But again, that's part of the process here because yeah. they want to work Gordon in the corner or nickel. Sorry. So, but yeah, to answer your question, I am because I mean, Brisker's just so solid. Um, clearly can play zone, can play man, seems smart. You can just see him taking charge out there on defense in the secondary. And I just think that that is that's going to have such a positive effect on Eddie Jackson. And I think you're already seeing it. Yes, a couple, I was just about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of places here and there where I still like to see Eddie Jackson actually pick off the pass. But he's getting his hands on more balls, as Vic Fangio would say. And then I, we, everyone knows how I feel about Jalen Johnson. I like him a lot. So, yes, I am buying the secondary. I'm very, very pleased with I think it's a Really good development for the Bears. In, in that two-minute situation that did not work out well for the offense, I think everybody saw it on Twitter at this point, the only time that Justin Fields took a shot downfield was Darnell when he matched up against Eddie Jackson. And Eddie Jackson had a better chance of making that catch than Darnell Mooney. The coverage was good, and it was Jackson who actually got his hand on the ball off mm -hmm. his fingertips, but it was there. Monday was the day where he could have completely taken out Byron Pringle, and Brian Byron Pringle seemed to know it. Yeah. I, I, Fast, look good. I hope it translates to games because I think that that could have a very, very positive effect on Eddie Jackson. One more brisker note. Jump ball from Justin Fields to Cole Komet. A little behind, but it was brisker who won the one-on-one -on -one matchup in the team drill. Against Cole Clement. Yep. Broke up the pass. One of the few the few passes from Justin Fields to Cole Clement today that were actually thrown high enough. Yes, there was a couple that weren't. But Brisker Again. went up and made the play. There were too many other throws where you got a huge 6'4 target. Why are you throwing it like at Short. a shoulder? Yes. Where where a Kindleville door, a Duke Shelley type player can easily get to it. I, I, I believe like the ball placement. There. I believe the correct name to use is linebacker Matthew Adams, who had the PBU at the goal line, one on one jump ball to Cole Komet, kind of underthrown by Justin Fields. 
Cole Clement loses the situation. Although a better ball, maybe towards the pylon, I think Cole Clement makes that catch. See, I'll take the blame for this, though, because you know what I was doing for the two hours before practice started today? I was sitting in the media room putting the finishing touches on my Bears Things column, which for the first time is coming out as a newsletter, newsletter. tomorrow morning. If you'd like to sign up for it, go to my Twitter account at Adam Hogue. It's free to everyone this week. It'll be in your inbox tomorrow morning. Um, it'll still be available at allchgo.com if you just want to read it. Uh, but that's only for CHGO members if you want to access it that way. Free to your inbox if you go sign up. But I did five questions with Cole Komet. little teaser for you, Johnsy. little high school football talk in there. Yeah, I seen Biter, yeah. Yeah. Notre Dame. Uh, we did not talk about Notre Dame, no. Oh. <sighs> Never mind. Next question. <laughs> Um, but anyway, part of that conversation was about the chemistry he is developing with Justin Fields, which I thought until today had been very positive, John Z. But of course, because I spent two hours right before practice working on that, it sucked today. Was it Matthew Adams or Joe Thomas? I think it was Joe Tom. Was it Joe Thomas who had uh look at my notes? I don't have my notes in front of me. Great badger, Joe Thomas. Is he the one who got hit in the back of the head with the ball? Oh, not that one. Okay. Sorry. Was that Matthew Adams? I don't know. I didn't see that play. Was that in seven on seven? No, that was during the second opportunity that Justin Fields got in the situational drill. Oh, was yeah. It... Which linebacker I don't know, was? man. There were way too many incompletions. He he completed one pass in two series. And it was a flip of the wrist on the run to Khalil Herbert. Mm -hmm. Not good. All right, here. Next question. Yeah, let's do it. I want you to rank these concerns around Justin Fields. Okay. All right. Here are the three categories. The offensive line and all its rotations, figuring out what works best. Number two, the disparity in talent at receiver where it's obvious that the secondary has the edge right now. Or three, everybody learning the new scheme offensively. Um, okay. I'm going to go O-line first because that's where I start to worry about Justin Fields' health. In some ways, I almost feel better about the O-line right now than I do the weapons that are not named Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. And maybe little little Ryan Griffin. He's a very dependable veteran who's made some plays out there. He caught a very well designed touchdown pass from Justin Fields today. See, there's another positive. Great play call. Great execution by Fields. Wide open tight end. Which is why I'm putting scheme third in that list. I don't like that. I I feel like they're just using that as an excuse right now. I'm not really buying that the scheme's a problem to pick up. Because it should be a lot easier than the playbook they were dealing with before. It's supposed to be simpler. And the designs over and over again, despite even on some bad throws, I'm like, that was well drawn up. There was a lot of creative plays I liked in the red zone today. That one you're talking about that got Griffin open and total Jaquan Brisker, who's been great. We just sang like, his praises. Spin cycle, didn't know where the ball was. And that was just a play where it was better O than better D. Well designed. So I put the scheme last. I go O-line, then the wide receiver weapons, then scheme. Okay. Okay. What else? I go ahead. I'll listen. I think, hold on, one more thought on that. I think you see it. Like specifically with the offensive line where... Like, there's options on the goal line. I, I think, again, they're better at running the ball right now than pass protection. Because when you saw them be in, like, pass-only situations, again, those two-minute hurry-up drills, they got beat bad. Now, maybe that's Justin Fields not anticipating or executing his position the way it should. But from my vantage point, it looked like he was under pressure. Or the ball is not getting out quick enough. Probably works twofold there. And that could be hard to judge, honestly, in camp. 
Like, I did see them call one sack for the first time. I, I want to say it's the first time I saw in a team drill where they're like, all right, he's sacked. Yeah, I almost wish they'd blow it more. I understand why they don't. There's a couple plays last week that were you were still able to evaluate the play downfield. I mean, it's between. like, come on, though. Like, if, if the player yeah, can literally, like, halfway put out his arm and touch fields, like, he's an amazing athlete. He's elusive. He's fast. But you got to give these defensive linemen some credit here. Like, he will get sacked. We saw it last year. He will get sacked. Yeah. Last question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like, holy hell, what am I watching here? I'm fully alarmed. I'm hitting that panic button. Where are you with Justin Fields at this point in camp? One day of pads in the books, but we've seen the full offseason program. We've seen five or six days of practice without pads. Another day of pads tomorrow. Where do you stand? Scale 1 to 10. Panic button. Uh, uh, might be an unfair question, but yeah, I don't know. I'm still a four. I think it's too early to panic. And, and there were, I would say before yesterday, I was feeling pretty good overall about things. Um, those two minute drills though, the last couple of days have been, just brutal. But I don't know who's running open. I'm not seeing the defense sitting back. You could start to see that the defense is figuring out the boot game too. Robert Quinn had to play like that today. Yeah, where it's like, okay, you see the same play every day. You, you know, we're. I know it's only week two of practice, but we're already starting to get there. Where the defense is starting to pick up on what the offense is doing. Um, which happens every year. I don't know. I'll give it more time. Today wasn't great. Even in the best case scenario, though, you knew Justin Fields was going to have rough days. So I'm going to say a four. Ask me in a week, though. I want to say I'm at a three. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Panic was a 10, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Like so you're even banging than... the button. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to tell everybody to relax a little bit. Not like Aaron Rodgers relax because, well, he's better, but like they got some things to figure out. I feel confident that they can actually run the ball. I don't know why I do, but I do at this point. Oh, I, I do. I'm seeing I do. signs. Yeah. But there's reasons to be concerned. Like I want to hear more of uh, – this is what I want to watch o- over the next week or so. Like, what changes at receiver? Is St. Brown doing it for you? So, I'm going to I'm gonna give away something that's in my newsletter tomorrow. Teaser. I did, because I want to get your reaction on it now. I, I did wide receiver power rankings. Because you know how it's just, like, completely up for grabs after Darnell Mooney? I put Equimania St. Brown number two. Oh. Now, I want to be clear. That's not what I'm predicting. That's not what I'm saying. Like, he's the number two wide receiver. I'm ranking what I've basically seen so far. And I think that he's had some plays here and there that, like, Byron Pringles had drops. Today was a good day for Velas Jones Jr., I thought. He made a great catch falling out of bounds. Yeah. From Trevor Simeon. Yeah. Right? It was Simeon. So you think that's too high for St. Brown? Or do you understand where I'm well, coming I think from? He's, I think he's three. If I would put Pringle above him, I would put Jones, Phelous Jones Jr., fourth. Well, that might be how I rank the depth chart. I'm just trying to rank, you know, like power ranking style. What have, what have you done for me lately? What what do we see? Well, I would so actually far? after today I put I definitely put Pringle there. Really? Yeah. I think he's been better overall. Okay. I'm trying to I'm looking at the list here. Um Chris Fink you see a little bit every now and then. Yep. He just seems like a like a dependable player. Like Daz Newsome made some plays. 
a Monday. Okay, but one of those plays was a ball batted 30 feet in the air by Eddie Jackson. That doesn't count. I know, but it's there. (laughs) (laughs) Like we saw Simba Webster more in the offseason program. Like Dante Pettis actually had a couple plays today. Today was a good day for him. Today was a good day for David Moore. It was. Yeah. Another guy you forget who was on the team. Yeah, never mind. (laughs) That was what was so weird about today's practice was the goal line was good, and I thought it was the wide receiver's best day. So maybe that's just the conclusion that today just really wasn't a great day for the quarterback. I don't know. Maybe. Because the wide receivers were actually out there looking presentable. All right. At some point in this conversation, I believe we hear from Fields tomorrow. Like, when do you start moving the meter towards a 10? Maybe after one or two preseason game, games? Well, I'm not going to get to a 10 unless it's a disaster in the season. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, I might go, you know... Closer to a six or seven, though, if it's if we're still having this okay, type yeah, of just, discussion just like here by the for the season, like your yeah. your alarm bells, like yeah, I mean, if we're through three preseason games and they're basically in 49ers prep, and we're still having these types of conversations, I don't think that's good at all. That's fair. That would worry me a lot. So, okay. Hey, Hogan Johns listeners. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills due. Well, good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is more than just about getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account so what are you waiting for hopefully not your paycheck get started with chime today applying for a free account takes less than two minutes get started at chime.com slash adams that's chime.com slash adams again chime.com slash adams banking services and debit card provided by the bank corp bank or stride bank and a members fdic early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer hey i need to tell you about trade coffee some of the best coffee you can get and one of the cool things trade coffee does is connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best craft roasters These are independent businesses, actually, from big cities and small towns, and trade customers are truly impactful for these independent roasters, often being the largest source of new growth for them. This is Expert Tasted Coffee. The trade coffee team actually taste tests thousands of coffees to keep 450 different kinds live and ready to ship every day and they have a first match guarantee so when they match you to a coffee they're so confident about it that if they get it wrong they'll take your feedback and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send a brand new bag for free trade coffee sends you freshly roasted beans from 60 of the country's best craft roasters small businesses who pay farmers fair prices to sustainably source the greatest beans from around the world. So whether your friends call you a coffee snob or you just know when coffee tastes really perfect, Trades Real Coffee experts personally will send you the taste test that works for you. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash adam22. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash adam22 and let trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash adam22 for $30 off. Now, our next partner is a pretty cool product. Let's talk about Athletic Greens. If you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, or a stronger immune system, it's a really easy, natural way. You've got to check out Athletic Greens. 
I'm sure you all agree that most of us are not huge fans of taking a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning. But with Athletic Greens, you can get rid of all those extra vitamin bottles and probably make some room in that cabinet. Athletic Greens is an all-in-one solution that actually tastes good. I mean it. It really tastes good. You really enjoy getting your daily vitamins. It tastes great, and it doesn't contain GMOs or nasty chemicals. It supports better sleep and recovery, and it supports mental clarity and alertness. Better yet, it costs you less than $3 a day. That's $3 a day. It's cheaper than getting all those supplements. It's truly an all-in-one product. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Adams. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Adams to take ownership over your health Pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, I want to know your take on Tevin Jenkins. Um, well, it's never good when trade rumors become public. I just can't stop thinking about what Mike Gundy said to <laughs> Mike Gundy. Right? <laughs> Come on. Uh, I, I should have had this ready to bring up. I, I almost lost our feet here. I'm, 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 I'm just happy. Up. You're you're talking about that Zoom call we have with Mike Gundy. The yeah, day I am talking yeah. about that Zoom call with Mike Gundy. Hold on I'm a just, second. I'm just happy he wasn't wearing an OAN shirt in that <laughs> Zoom call. <laughs> Keep talking. What's your take on it? Because... Wait, I want to know what you're talking about with Mike Gundy. Are you Hold trying on. to find I, the quote? I am going to try to find the quote. Okay. So I mean, you, you could pair for it. Okay. No, I want to find the uh, the right thing. Just here's what I don't understand, Johns. If you're trying to trade this guy right now, this is a bizarre way to try to get trade value for him. <laughs> Demote him in OTAs. Openly talk about how he's get, getting work with the trainers. I mean, this is a guy with durability concerns, availability concerns. You're casting more doubt about that. Why? Why? I, I just, that's the part I don't understand. You ready for the quote? I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> I know you weren't. It's okay. <laughs> I, I found the quote. I, I mean, but I, I know felt, what you're saying. I, I think I, I know fell asleep like Tony LaRusso on you earlier. You so did. It's fine. What a great clip that is. Holy moly. Man. I mean, in case you needed confirmation that the guy is just not really there. Yeah. There it is for you right there on your screen. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to 2022, Tony. The cameras are always on you. By the way, the the John Boy breakdown of of uh, Tim Anderson getting kicked out the other night. It, it's so freaking funny. You got to watch it. It is so funny. Like he he puts up the quote of Tony Larusa being like, "I don't think he bumped the umpire," and then the video cuts to an old man in the stands who goes, "Oh, he bumped him." <laughs> Like live as it's happening. Really? <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, and then Tony also said that Tim didn't swear. And then John Boy's got him for like eight different F words. It's so funny. Oh, oh Tony. Sorry. My favorite, again, White Sox. The only thing I'm following in the White Sox is that they're, they, they're apparently in, in on everybody. <laughs> But they won't get any of them. No, so they, they watch it and all. Otani. Yeah, they tried. To, yeah, they tried. They tried. Soto, Otani. Remember Manny Machado, of course. Bryce Harper. You know. Yeah. We're trying, guys. So that's where we are. Thanks for thanks for the effort. It's like that Bart Simpson clip where he's got yeah. the at least you tried cake and he throws away. Yeah. Like at what so point they're do serving you realize, at Comiskey? At what point does it make? Do you realize that it makes you look really bad at your jobs? That you can't land any of them. Yeah. I don't bad. Know. Bad. Here's the quote. You ready? Okay, here we go. My gun. Here it is. Here it is. Tevin is an interesting young man. And at that point, you know, you look at him and you say, it took that long for you to realize that you were a special talent. And it really did with him because he had such a laid back personality. I don't think he ever saw himself being that good of a football player. That's why I'm saying with the next couple of years, the NFL is going to be really shocked at what you have because when we asked him and challenged him to be as good as he can be and be a dominant player, we had a lot of success with him on those days. On those days. Ready? 
I hate to go back to what I said about Tevin. As you guys get to know him and the staff there in Chicago gets to know him, he has to be challenged mentally. And hopefully, he's, he goes off on a tangent here, if that's challenging him mentally based on him being passed over by other teams and he uses that to his advantage, that's going to really benefit the Chicago Bears. Sorry, I kind of paraphrased there for a second, but I was thinking about that or have been thinking about that over the past several days with Tevin Jenkins, and it, it appears to me that they're not challenging him correctly or he is not responding well to their challenging ways of life under Matt Eberflus or doesn't like to be challenged that way. They've had enough. I think the stems all the way back to the offseason program. I think there's a doubt in that building right now that Tevin Jenkins has what it takes to be a great NFL player. And when I say that, I'm talking about the drive, the want to. You got to want it. You can be talented as all hell. And I'm not saying that that's, I think that's the concern the Bears have. Uh, and I and I think the move in OTAs to demote him to the second team was Mike Gundy. What Mike Gundy's talking about, you know, trying to wake him up, give him something to be pissed off about. Yeah. And 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 unfortunately, either that works or it doesn't. And I think they're in a world where it didn't work. Yeah. And now they're trying to figure out what the hell to do with him. Now, why he's not practicing, I don't know. Did he ask for a trade? Does he not want to practice? Because making it look like he's dealing with an injury and working with the trainers, I don't see how that helps. Yeah. The guy's been in one training practice, training camp practice in two years, Johns. One. Not good. Zero not with good. pads on. What's even more remarkable, if you think about the fact that they rarely even wear pads during the season... How many padded NFL practices has Tevin Jenkins even participated in since he was drafted? Three? Two? I don't, I mean, I'd have to go back and I, I don't know when they were actually wearing pads in December and January last year in practice. Sometimes they don't do it at all that late in the year. No. No. Maybe it's his back. I don't know. Something seems off. Some, there's something going on there. Yeah, and usually it's more than just injury. Yeah. You know, it's like the Roquan Smith thing. Like, okay, maybe he has a... <laughs> Here I am about to quote John Fox again. All right, we call these boo-boos or owies or something. Oh, yeah, he's got an owie. <laughs> yeah, owie yes. He may have an owie, he's but we all owie. know once he signs a new contract, that owie is going to be gone. And he's watching practice every single day, literally from the sideline, holding like the play sheet, ready to get out there. <sighs> yeah. It's like the Gabe Karimi thing all over again. Okay, but Gabe Karimi had more than an owie. Yeah, he did. And dislocated kneecap. I mean, that was a legitimate But thing. if I remember correctly in that story, he was just returning to practice and the Bears wanted him to do a bit more, but he wasn't doing enough and they just had enough. Yeah, and that happens. And these aren't the guys that drafted this guy. It's true. So, um, all right. Anything else? Back at it tomorrow. More pads. Talk to you on Thursday. Hopefully, it's a different story for the Bears offense because I like to cover a different story. I know. We're not trying to to, to give you bad news on the offense. I feel like we actually did a good job of relaying some positives as well. They're there. I'm trying to tell you. I consistently like the scheme. Yeah. I really do. I think the and it's a good thing the good. secondary is better. The secondary was brutal last year for the Bears. So many glaring mistakes, just blown coverages. The talent upgrades are obvious to anyone watching this team, especially in the secondary. That's a positive. That is. Yeah. The defense could be good. So essentially, we could be calling, covering the same exact damn team we always are. <laughs> new coaches, new GMs. Same bear storylines. Bears. 
All right. Well, uh, we're out of here. Pads go back on tomorrow. Another padded practice on Wednesday. And then we will be back here for you on Thursday. Thursday is technically an off day for the Bears, but we will have an episode for you. So we'll have a recap on if things got better. I think Kevin Fishman will be on here to talk, uh, talk about Ladarius Mack. Oh, nice. I'm at, I am actually quite intrigued now to see which random players, because there's a lot of random players in the Bears roster right now. Oh, there's plenty to choose from. Is Ladarius Mack a, on a, in a camp right now? I am not sure. But at least he was Cleo Mack's brother. Who knows who the fish man is going to bring up this time? Do you remember last year when the Bears put out that feature on Ladarius Mack and then they cut him the same day? <laughs> uh, it was a good feature, too. We heard about over-communicating today from some Bears players, and I think that needs to extend to other departments sometimes. <laughs> like, Let's not forget the QB1 fiasco. I don't know what you're talking about. Andy Dalton. Oh, that's, you know what it's talking about. The smile. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm if you're just watching kidding. on this. I'm watching us on YouTube. You know, he's full of it. <laughs> Bears. All right. Well, follow us on Twitter. At Adam Hogue, at Adam Johns. Please check out the newsletter coming out tomorrow. You can read Johnsy on The Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns. It's where also you can get uh, Kevin Fishbane's full breakdown of where Ladarius Mack is now. Good old where are they now story. That's not real. It's not really on the athletic, but it should be. Maybe he'll do it eventually. There John Greenberg was at today. practice today. He was there. He was there now. <laughs> did he know the MLB trade deadlines today? Uh, I think he did. Does Rick Hahn know the MLB trade deadlines today? Does Tony Larusa? No. I don't know. He's taking a nap right now. He's got a game at seven. He's got to rest up. <laughs> She's coming. All right. Uh, we'll talk to you Thursday. See ya. See ya.